What's up everybody, this is John with John Fair Innovations bringing you another educational lesson. So today I'm going to show you how to extract information from worded questions in order to solve them. Now before I get to the video, if you enjoy it, do make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment on maybe another topic you'd like me to tackle, and if you really enjoyed the video, do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date for all the videos as they come out. Now today we're going to learn a really important skill that I get asked about quite a lot, which is the ability to solve uh, specifically math problems uh, from worded questions. And this can be quite a tricky task to do. So firstly, we're going to have a bit of fun with it. Um, we're actually going to take a riddle, and it's a riddle from a movie that I watched as a child called Die Hard with Vengeance. Now I really enjoyed this video because the uh, main protagonist, John McClane, is posed with all these questions he needed to solve, these puzzles. Um, yeah, so a normal person would enjoy it for all the action and excitement. For me, it was all the puzzles because I wanted to solve them. And puzzles and riddles are actually a great way to learn the skill of extracting information for you to solve because a lot of it has unnecessary information. So I'll give you the riddle, trying not to do my best Simon impersonation, and we'll pause the video and see if you can work it out, and then we'll talk a bit more about it after that. So this is one of the riddles he was asked. As I was going to St. Ives, I met a man with seven wives. Every wife had seven sacks, every sack had seven cats, every cat had seven kittens. Cats, kittens, sacks, and wives, how many were going to St. Ives? Pause the video and see if you can work it out. All right, so the answer is coming in three, two, one. So of course, the answer is in fact one. Now the trick of this riddle is that it throws at you a lot of numbers. You know, you've got seven wives, seven cats, seven kittens, seven sacks, and these all multiply on top of each other if you were trying to calculate how many objects or things there were. But the biggest skill to have when you're, when you're faced with a worded problem is first understanding important and relevant information. So in this question, in this riddle, the very last line is how many were going to St. Ives? Now, it's very easy to start trying to calculate it because you're thinking, oh, well, they had seven cats, seven kittens. And I intentionally didn't put the worded problem up there because obviously if you can see it, it's a lot easier to solve. But now I've got it next to me, it's probably a lot simpler for you to be able to solve. And if you look at the very first line, so as I was going to St. Ives, so I, so I'm one person. So when we've got the problem, how many are going to St. Ives, what we're looking for is information that specifically involves St. Ives. Now the next line says, I met a man and then with seven wives, seven sacks, seven cats, kittens, you know, yada, yada, yada. All of this is actually irrelevant because they, from that very first, um, that very first sentence about the rest of, rest of the people that you met, you met them, they weren't actually traveling to St. Ives. So all of that, the rest of that is just jargon. All you have to worry about is that very first sentence as I was going to St. Ives. So the answer is in fact one. Now I'm going to give you a math problem and again, what we're looking for is very specific information that will solve our problem. And of course this one uses the concept of speed equals distance divided by time. And if you wanted to learn more about how to use that formula, check out a previous video I've done where I go into detail about how you can apply that and how you can solve it. But today I've got a very wordy problem that requires you to use the, this formula. So the problem that I've written is a man was traveling to the Gold Coast from his house. He wanted to go to the beach because he loves surfing. Uh, he traveled 60 kilometers in one hour. He arrived at 9 a.m. because that's when the best waves were for surfing. What was the average speed of the trip? Now I've got the problem next to me. And so straight away, I know that if I'm trying to solve speed, so I go straight to the, the, last, the last part, it asks me, what was the average speed of the trip? I'm looking for the question because there's no point in me worrying about everything else until I actually understand what I'm trying to solve. In this case, the big keyword I see there is speed of the trip. 
So now I know that this is what I need to solve. And knowing from my previous video that the formula for speed is speed equals distance divided by time. So if I'm solving speed, that's not gonna be in there, but that's okay. Because if I'm solving this, then I'll need to find a distance and I'll need to find a period of time. Well, I'm looking through, uh, the man was traveling to the Gold Coast from his house. Not important information, keep going. He wanted to go to the beach because he loves surfing. That's great for him, but for me to solve this problem, I really don't care. Um, he traveled 60 kilometers in one hour. Now this is important because we have a distance and we have a time. So this is something that we can use in order to solve our problem. So I'm going to write next to me that distance equals 60 and that time equals one. You can put the units as well, so 60 kilometers and one hour. All right, we'll keep going to make sure there's no other information that could be important. So the next line says that he arrived at 9 a.m. because that's when the best ways for surfing were. Again, great for him, but this is not really important for me solving the problem, solving the problem of speed uh, of the trip. So now I take my information that I have, our 60 kilometers and our one hour, I substitute it into my formula, which is distance divided by time. So we're gonna have 60 divided by one, and that's gonna give me the answer of 60 kilometers per hour. So that's the average speed of his trip. So that's how you go about when you're dealing with wordy problems. You look specifically first for what the question is asking, and then you extract the information that is relevant to that. Like, it's great that he wants to surf, it's great that he arrived at 9 a.m., but this doesn't help me when I'm trying to solve the problem. Just the same as our previous one with our riddle, it's great that you, that you met a man who had seven wires, seven sacks with seven cats and seven kittens. That's great, but that doesn't help you or doesn't provide any additional information about how many people were going to St. Ives. So it's really important to be able to sort of skim through these these sentences to really hone in on what is actually important for you to solve your problem. Well, there you have it. Hopefully you enjoyed that. Do practice it yourself. Honestly, riddles and puzzles are great for this because they make you think um, beyond what's actually written in the problem. They make you sort of have to think beyond simple terms. So it's really, really great if you're trying to hone your skills when you're trying to extract information, for example. But always stay safe. Be kind to one another and I'll see you next time.